Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Today's topic is taste and taste in birds. I have heard so many different things uh, that people say they have heard about birds and their, their bird taste. And, and of course, uh, they worry about them as far as uh, the food and uh, rejecting, especially now that we have hot seed, which we'll talk about as well. Uh, and, and so what I thought I would do would talk about uh, taste in birds. And especially, you can't talk about taste without talking about tongues. So we're going to talk a lot about tongues too. So let's start right off the bat. Can birds taste? Yes. Do they taste the same as you and I uh, and other mammals? No. Very, very different. Uh, now, if you know about your tongue, you know about uh, the taste buds on there. And if you know a lot about it, you know that we have different uh, receptors uh, among our taste buds on our tongue. So we can taste sweet and bitter and sour and lots and lots of uh, different tastes. Now, birds have far fewer taste buds on their bony tongues. Let me get this picture of this tongue up here. If you hopefully you can see that I might want well, let me reduce me a little bit. Okay. You can see that size of that tongue on that uh, red-bellied woodpecker. Um, birds' tongues are very bony in structure, not like ours. Ours are very fleshy, uh, fleshy and muscular, uh, muscly uh, feeling tongues, where theirs are very bony. And whereas we have, I don't know, seven to 9,000 taste buds on our tongues, uh, you know, woodpeckers and uh, a lot of birds only have 90 on their taste, bud, uh, taste buds on their tongues. And they also don't produce a much saliva. So we do, you know, our mouths water and, and, and we sometimes too much and then you get saliva, but birds don't have that. They don't produce a lot of it anyways. Um, and we do know that from the structure of birds' tongues that their, their taste receptors are close to their saliva gland. So that does uh, uh, help them when it comes to tasting. Now, what's fascinating to me is that the receptors that birds have are better for uh, tasting nutrition. Now that, uh, like if we could do that, like if, we, well, maybe, maybe we do know how to do it a little bit, but we ignore it. Uh, birds can't taste sweet. Um, they have very little ability to taste bitter. Um, and so, but they do, they can taste uh, things that are important like amino acids and pepsids and, and carbohydrates. Um, so they know via their, their taste buds whether a food has nutritional value that they need, which is amazing. Um, so that's, you know, sometimes they drop seed, they drop food. Uh, and, and a lot of times that is, like, of course, they can sense that if a bird seed has a, a, a hole in it, or that they taste and it doesn't have the value, nutritional value they need or want, they may drop it and, and get, pick up another seed that may be more nutritionally valuable to them, which is an amazing adaptation. So birds are constantly picking up, picking up foods, and if it meets their needs, they're gonna they're going to eat it. Now, another thing that is true with birds that isn't with, with us at, at the humans is that. Food stays in their mouths for very short periods of time. So they're, uh, they're, they're, when they eat a berry or they eat a mealworm or they eat a seed, it goes very quickly. They don't chew it up and taste it and swish it around in their mouths and things like where we get a full taste of food. They just swallow it on down. And then, of course, their digestive tract, which is a whole other program, but they store it, you know, in, in, in their crop and then they help uh, grind it up in gizzards and, and so forth and the rest of their digestive tract. But they spend a lot, the food spends a lot less time in their mouths. It goes right on through. Now, I said earlier that now with the hot seeds, this is becoming a hot topic, if you will, uh, about, well, do birds, can, can this seed hurt birds? Uh, and no, it cannot. Um, the And the reason why is what we just talked about. They don't have the sensors on their tongues. In fact, they, <laughs> the manufacturers of this seed also manufacture pet foods. And they make parrot foods and they can't make parrot food hot enough. They parrots love hot stuff. And birds did birds are important distributors of pepper seeds and, and parts of the planet. And also they eat them and they they 
and get the nutritional value out of them. As long as they do have a nutritional value, they'll eat these hot seeds and it doesn't bother them. Mammals, on the other hand, with all of their uh, thousands of uh, taste buds and receptors on their tongue are very sensitive to the, the heat that they, the peppers have. And so, um, that, so the answer there is no, uh, that they, they, they doesn't affect the birds. And I also have had customers say, isn't it cruel to the, to the squirrels or to the raccoons or this hot seed? Well, is it cruel when you go into a restaurant and you bite into something and it's a little bit spicy and you go, oh, I don't want that. No, that's what the, it, it is. It's not harming the mammals. It's not harming them, but it it it, it, it dissuades them from wanting to eat your bird seed. So, um, the, the, of course, the structure has a lot to do with it. Now, to promise, we were going to talk a little more about tongues because they are fascinating. There are three basic kinds of tongues in the bird world, and that is um, things like, oh, morning doves. Morning doves are just pick up the seed, swallow it, pick up seeds, swallow it, pick up seeds. And like I said, they store it in their uh, crawl and then they'll uh, 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 grind it up in their gizzards and the digestive system and all. So they have very small tongues and very tongues that are not meant for a whole lot of, uh, of work to do with work. And there's several birds in that group that are like that. But we also have birds that need to be, be more manipulative of their seeds uh, and, and cardinals are one, but, but a gross, I mean, a crossbills, like in this picture, the red crossbill, they have to pry open uh, the pine cones and they have to have a tongue that can manipulate and get the heart, the seed out of that pine cone. And so they, their tongue is a little longer, a little more flexible for, uh, for grinding or, or picking out what their, their food item needs to be. And of course, the best example of the third type of tongue which is the extraction tongues, as we call them, uh, the, the ruby-throated hummingbird for darting into their the, and flowers and getting that nectar out. Uh, and then what I started with up front with the woodpeckers, uh, woodpeckers, you know, dart their tongue back into wood crevices and they're barbed and that's like, you know, stab insects and bring them out and eat them. And I did a program on flickers just recently about how they dart their tongue down in anthills. They have very long tongues. So you have, you have three different kinds of tongues, but none of them have a ton of receptors on them. They're just very different uh, than, than mammals. And, and, you know, we, we think in terms of us and, you know, what our tongues do for us and our taste buds. But remember, you know, the, the, the bird world, it is quite a bit different. That's why they can eat hot stuff and not be bothered by it. So um, amazing structures. Um, it, it, they do have taste. It don't anybody tell you they don't. Uh, they definitely do. Uh, but it is made not quite as sensitive But in, as far as flavors go, but very sensitive as far as value of food goes. So pretty good idea for a bird biology topic, the tongues and taste in birds. So thanks for the idea. Give us a like, give us a share. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, thank you very much. Until next time, let's talk birds.